Hello and welcome back to this uh, lecture 25 on microsystems fabrication by advanced manufacturing processes. A quick recap of what we did in the last lecture, we talked about the analysis of discharging part of the RC relaxation circuit. We also discussed about the material removal rate in ADM, uh, particularly in case of mild steel there is an established uh, um, empirical relationship depending on the amount of power which is given in kilowatts and the amount of material removal in millimeter cube per minute. We also talked about several general characteristic trends of uh, the material removal rate with respect to various circuit parameters like resistance, capacitance, the total discharge current so on so forth, spark gap. We talked about surface finish and machining accuracy and then finally, uh, we had a close uh, discussion about uh, the dependence of surface finish on pulse energy of the EDM system. So, today we will just try to go ahead and uh, try to look at uh, an estimation, numerical estimation of uh, the surface roughness in a particular situation. Uh, this problem here represents uh, such a uh, situation here where a steel work piece is being machined and the circuit parameters are given to be resistance R equal to 50 ohms uh, capacitance equal to 10 microfarads and a total operating voltage of 200 volts, discharge voltage of 150 volts and uh, you have to estimate the surface roughness uh, which is uh, also the HRMS value and if you may recall from the previous lecture the HRMS is represented as 1.11 Q to the power of 0 0.384 where the HRMS is in microns and uh, Q is in mm cube per minute. Uh, the energy here which uh, is delivered is actually dependent on this resistance and capacitance and also the various parameters like operating voltage and discharge voltage. And uh, we do have in case of uh, particularly mild steel a uh, very active relationship to derive the Q empirically as 27.4 W to the power of 1.54, where W is the uh, power, the pulse power in kilowatts. And uh, how we calculate W is by looking at the energy which is half C V D square and capacitance C is 10 microfarads 10 to the power of minus 6 and uh, discharge voltage is 150. So, this comes out to be equal to 0 0.113 joules. Uh, this total cycle time can be calculated uh, as T C which is actually uh, equal to uh, the resistance times the capacitance R C log of V 0 by V 0 minus V D. In this particular case, this happens to be 200 volts and this comes out to be 50 volts. And so, the R C the total time cycle or cycle time is represented as 50 times of 10, 10 to the power of minus 6 log and this is to the base E, log to the base E of 4, 200 by 50 and this comes out to be 7, 10 to the power of minus 4 seconds or around 700 microseconds. The average uh, input power is energy per unit time can be represented as 0 0.113 divided by 7 10 to the power of minus 4 that is 0 0.16 kilowatts and uh, the total Q material removal rate comes out to be 27.4 times of 0 0.16 to the power of 1.54 mm cube per minute and this equals 1.633 mm cube per minute and based on that subsequently we can find out uh, the surface finish by using the expression H R M S 
equals 1.11 q to the power of 0 0.384 and this is 1.11 1.633 to the power of 0 0.384 becomes 1.34 microns. So, essentially this is how the HRMS value comes out to be equal to. Now, there are few aspects which uh, need to be mentioned here and those are about the inaccuracies uh, while considering the EDM process or electro discharge machining process. So, uh, the main kind of problems which come uh, in an EDM process are because of um, the amount of the, the difference in the time uh, that uh, a particular hole various portions uh, or various portions on the wall of a particular hole is exposed to in terms of uh, receiving the sparks from the EDM machine. So, the taper of uh, the machined hole in an EDM is a major uh, inaccuracy due to which you have to suitably design the electrode sometimes. So, that it compensates for this taper and uh, you can have a straight uh, cut. There are other problems like overcuts uh, due to sparks at the side faces of the electrodes and uh, then there are uh, errors due to the gradual change in the electrode tool shape and size. So, principally these are the three categories into which you can um, uh, determine or uh, classify all the inaccuracies produced by the EDM process. So, let us look at uh, the details of how a taper would be produced. So, as we know that uh, the electrode this electrode uh, here advances towards the work piece the shape of the machined hole is shown here. And uh, you if you look you know when the electrode is coming here in the top portion uh, right about this portion uh, the spark uh, exposure to this surface uh, starts immediately. And then because of which there is local melting and there is material which goes away. But as the, uh, the tool proceeds downwards slowly the spark exposure increases to the side walls, but the uh, tendency of the spark to formulate near the surface is still remaining. Okay. So, uh, the surface gets exposed for a longer time. to sparks causing uh, a, a, a greater diameter uh, of the surface hole in comparison to the uh, hole at a certain depth. So, it is found to depend on the uh, tool diameter of course, and um, what you can do is you can either appropriately insulate the tool or you can create a suitable condition. Uh, by uh, you know changing the electrical parameters, so that this problem of tapering can be minimized. So, that is one aspect uh, of causing an inaccuracy. The other is an overcut, which typically means that um, there is always some kind of a extra uh, size of the hole in comparison to the tool diameter. So, uh, typically an overcut is a dimension by which the hole in the work piece exceeds the electrode size. The magnitude of the overcut is dependent on the spark length and uh, to some extent on the crater dimensions. Uh, supposing there are wear particles which are present in, in the gap here like this is a wear particle. The effective length of the spark and hence the magnitude of the overcut is somehow increased by this. Uh, wear particle, because uh, if you consider the spark length to be um, uh, some uh, you know equal to the overcut. In this particular case, the spark is facing its own metal particle, which has been removed and it should get extended by exactly the same diameter. Okay. So, from here it goes to here, uh, supposing this were d. So, this is d plus d w, d w is the diameter of the particle. So, uh, this is a perennial problem of uh, taper and overcut of uh, EDM machines. And uh, again uh, this really when the, when the tool is approaching this point uh, the only this zone is being exposed, but as the tool goes inside the side zones are being exposed. So, this can be controlled in a way in a limited manner by again side insulating the tools. So, that there is uh, uh, no extra spark length. Uh, which is formulated and no extra overcut which is formulated. So, if you look at the energy versus uh, taper in most of these tools and uh, as a matter of fact even the energy versus the overcut 
as you can see that if the spark energy is increased both the uh, overcut as well as the taper they vary if we look at only the overcut size spark energy is more the overcut is linearly increasing as you can see and uh, on the other hand if spark energy is uh, more uh, the <coughs> the taper also uh, is substantially increasing. So, all uh, these defects or all these uh, aberrations are really related to the spark energy uh, in joules um, of that 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 the uh, EDM process has to offer. Uh, let us also talk a little bit about tool and electrode uh, the tool electrode and the dielectric fluid uh, as is obvious that electrodes play a very important role uh, in uh, uh, determining uh, how successful an EDM operation could be and uh, how uh, wh what are the different electrical parameters of an electrode also somehow matters for the formulation and generation of the spark. So, uh, the material selection for the electrode is uh, a very important aspect in any EDM process uh, given a particular material combination of the tool and the um, work piece. Uh, the, uh, the other thing which is of significant importance is the tool wear okay, the tool electrode wear and that is because of course, there is a sparking action going on continuously between the work piece and tool. So, there is uh, erosion which happens due to this uh, sparking action both at the work piece which is the causative for all the MRR or the machining removal material removal rate and the electrode side uh, where actually the electrode gets melted because of repeated sparking. So, a material should be chosen which has a relatively good electrode wear characteristics meaning thereby that it machines uh, the, the work piece, but then the electrode wear is minimum. Okay. So, one of the principal materials uh, that are that is used for uh, the tool is graphite it goes directly into the vapor phase without any melting and uh, you can define this wear ratio r q as 2.25 r theta to the power of minus 2.3 this is again an empirical relationship where uh, the r theta is really the ratio of the melting points of the work and the tool and uh, r q is the wear ratio. So, if you have a good choice uh, and the material of the tool uh, has a melting point which is uh, greater than that of the work piece uh, the r q the wear ratio automatically improves okay, and vice versa. So, uh, the selection criteria of the electrode uh, material really depends on what kind of material removal rate you need to use, what is the tool wear ratio that you are targeting and also uh, what is the ease of machining these electrodes because you can have the exact negative shape of what you are going to machine on a plate and also the cost has to be kept in mind of the particular electrode in question. So, most of the commonly used electrode materials uh, that are used are brass, copper, graphite, aluminum alloys, copper tungsten alloys, silver tungsten alloys etcetera. Uh, the methods that are used for making the electrodes are either just normal conventional machining and sometimes micro machining uh, with uh, great precision and accuracy this has become a really major aspect and some of the example problems we will take off later on in the MEMS area are really using EDM towards uh, the micro machining. Uh, you can also use metal spraying for developing the electrodes or press forming the operations for these electrode materials. Normally, you prefer the EDM electrode to have circulation of uh, uh, the uh, fluid to be in the near vicinity because as the circulation increases the material removal rate enhances uh, we have talked about this many times. So, therefore, it is pertinent to mention that flow holes need to be designed within the electrode which will support this circulation and make it easier particularly uh, considering the fact that the electrode uh, work piece gap is minimum in EDM uh, operations. Okay, so, there are uh, these holes uh, which should be as large as possible for rough cuts and allow large flow rates at low pressures uh, without uh, much bending. So, that there uh, does not occur any um, sort of depreciation or damage to the tool surface and at the same time it allows for enough circulation in the EDM tank. So, basic dielectric fluids which are 
uh, used for EDM we, uh, have the requirements of low viscosity of course, so that they can flow easily. They should have the absence of uh, toxic vapors because otherwise uh, the operator gets exposed. Chemically they should be neutral without any uh, ionicity, so that uh, even if they get um, decomposed there is no uh, particular deposition which would take place on the electrodes or very minimalistic deformation which uh, deposition which would take place at the electrodes should have the absence of inflaming tendency of these fluids it should not burn up or the, and should be low cost okay so typically ordinary water and sometimes mineral oil are used mostly for edm fluids and uh, what is also important is that uh, um, the uh, the, uh, the fluid that you are using should have a relatively higher dielectric constant, so that it can support uh, the, uh, the respective potential difference uh, between the tool and the workpiece, so that uh, it can lead to a sparking condition. So, with this I think the EDM section uh, is more or less covered. Now, we will start a very new and interesting topic of uh, e-beam machining following this. So, in electron beam machining um, as you know it is a thermal process, <coughs> where a stream of electrons is impinged onto uh, a work surface uh, and uh, that is impinged at a very high velocity thereby transferring all the kinetic energy that these electrons have or they possess. Uh, onto the work surface. Okay. So, it is basically a uh, sort of uh, interaction of electrons with the matter, uh, which leads to the vibrational energy of the matter itself and uh, thus increasing the localized temperature to a level where uh, the material the atoms uh, the material would come off as atom in, in a atom by atom manner. Okay. So, depending on the uh, intensity uh, of the heat generated, uh, the material can melt or vaporize, and the process of uh, heating by an electron beam uh, can depend really on the intensity of the beam um, and can be used for various applications like maybe annealing, maybe welding, or metal removal uh, by delivering suitable heat content in every case. So, just some facts and figures about the electron beam machining typically you have to have very high velocities of uh, the electrons coming out from the source and uh, you know the kind of velocities that those electrons uh, would have could range in several tens of thousands of kilometers per second and uh, if you, you apply a suitably high accelerating voltage um, of uh, to to the to the to the electrons and so, if you look at facts and figures, if an accelerating voltage of about 150 kilo volts is applied, it can produce a fast electron as fast as about 228,478 kilometers per second, which is very fast. Okay, and so you can imagine that this kind of speeds imparted onto the electrons would lead to what kind of lattice vibrations as the electrons strike the material surface okay and that's one of the principal reasons why uh, things get molted or vaporized sometimes directly because of the high amount of kinetic energy and it's not one electrons it's a beam of electrons which is being uh, focused onto a single spot where machining is to be done so <coughs> typically if we look at again some of the values um, if an electron beam like this with about 228,478 kilometers per second velocity of individual electrons can be focused to a point which is about 10 to 200 micrometers in size, it can go up to delivering a power density as high as 6500 billion watts per millimeter square. So, this is how much you know energy can be delivered really in a very focused manner onto a surface. Now, this kind of a power uh, if, uh, if applied to the lattice structure or the material as such can simply vaporize uh, the material substantially. Okay. So, it just directly sublimates it goes into the vapor state and uh, if, you, if you raster the E beam over the surface typically uh, there is a tendency of uh, the, uh, the machining to be 
precisely controlled based on wherever the beam hits the material and so uh, as you can really super focus and narrow down the beam to a small spot the resolution at which you can do this increases. One of the reasons why E beam is a preferred modality in most of the micro machining or nano machining processes uh, because of the precision accuracy and the resolution limit of the system. Uh, these days uh, E beam lithography uh, which is a very modern process and we will be describing in some of the lectures later uh, is essentially using the same principle of an accelerated beam super focused on to a small spot and it creates enough damage to the photoresist material and uh, the, the resists are beam sensitive resists like maybe PMMA for polymethyl methacrylate where such uh, interactions would result in material coming off the surface or uh, in a selective manner. Okay. So, you can actually imprint with this technique features as small as several tens of nanometers spaced by equal distances. So, that is the resolution at which you can write owing to the fast and the small uh, spot size uh, and scanning speed respectively. So, uh, if we look at uh, some of the uh, dimensions of features that E beam is suitable uh, to use. So, typically EB, EBM has been uh, used for drilling of fine holes cutting narrow slots holes as small as 25 to 125 microns in diameter and this limit has I think further gone down uh, depending on modern technology uh, that is being increasingly used to super focus the beam. Um, it can also be used for uh, drilling thicknesses up to about 1.25 millimeters. So, uh, really high aspect ratio uh, features and structures can be drilled in metals using this uh, technique. So, the narrow slot uh, which can be cut by E beam has uh, a width tens of microns and this I think we have discussed before. Uh, and uh, an, an electron beam uh, can be maneuvered by typically magnetic deflection coils making the machining uh, of complex contours easy. So, it all becomes uh, a matter of uh, programming the topology of a surface uh, on the beam direction and direction can be controlled by suitably varying magnetic field in space. So, you have a lot more flexibility to raster the beam on complex shapes and features as well which may not be the case in some of the conventional machining where metal to metal contact is, is needed. So, uh, one has to however, be careful of one uh, small factor that these electron beams are high energy and so typically they should not come in direct collision with air molecules which might create ionization and lot of uh, undesirable effects which might change the resolution greatly. So, typically the only limitation that the E beam system has to offer is that these are done in high vac, uh, high vacuum uh, columns and uh, the workpiece size has to be limited because of uh, the associated complexity of creating vacuum to the level of almost no air. Okay, I mean probably 10 to the power of minus 6 or minus 7 torr uh, pressure where minimum amount of air is uh, permissible. So, uh, typically you do these in vacuum columns which limits the size uh, and uh, it the process becomes unsuitable for large work pieces. And if you look at uh, the way that the different applications can be grouped uh, as a plot of power density delivered to the surface. Uh, with respect to the hot spot diameter, you can see that for the E beam machining typically and the combination has the largest size, okay. meaning thereby that uh, it works for a, a lot of hot spot diameters with a wide ranging power density in watt per millimeter square. The other machining processes are quite limited as you can see here electric discharge, laser beam. Um, in fact, welding arc, gas flame, so on, so forth. Uh, the E beam, by and large, has the largest range of the different values of power density and hot spot diameters. It is obvious that uh, uh, the electron beam is 
and therefore, uh, one of the most preferred thermal processes for uh, all kind of machining activities in comparison to some of these other uh, form where uh, associated sparks or uh, high power optical beams are being used. So, this typically shows the uh, layout schematic layout of a beam column uh, which generates the, the electron beam. And uh, as you can see here the beam column has several parts it is typically stored in a vacuum chamber uh, which has a tentative power of minus 5 or minus 6 millimeter mercury uh, vacuum level. Uh, there is an electron gun which operates on the principle of thermionization meaning thereby that uh, this gun is heated on its surface there is a filament and uh, this is also the cathode which is electron rich. You can see the way this uh, power supply is positioned making this the negative electrode and so there are huge amount of electrons which are existing in this particular region here of the electrode. Uh, there is uh, a hot tungsten filament which uh, heats this cathode so that it starts thermionizing the material and electrons come off uh, by virtue of thermionic emissions of the surface. And then there is a driving anode here which is also perforated in nature. So, this is perforated anode and the idea is that as in most of the E beam columns even used for uh, scanning electron or tunneling microscopy processes the, the electrons thus generated out of this cathode uh, are uh, pumped uh, through the voltage which exists between this, uh, this anode and the cathode. Okay. So, the potential difference existing here is responsible for imparting kinetic energy onto the thermionically emitted electrons and uh, as they go into space they also get uh, squeezed because of the uh, shape of uh, the emitter here and uh, in a way they are further squeezed by using electromagnetic lenses and uh, there are two set of lenses one for focusing as you can see here and the other set of lens for rastering the beam whereby just varying the magnetic field you can do beam control on the workpiece. A workpiece is typically grounded so that uh, it is by virtue of its uh, state of electrostatic potential also captures maximum electrons which are generated by the beam setup. Okay. So, the grid shaped cup here is very important for focusing the primary focusing of the beam which occurs in this particular region uh, which ensures that this beam uh, kind of gets into the narrow gap of uh, electromagnetic lens as shown here. Okay, EM lens. So, when the diameter of the required hole is larger than the beam diameter, uh, typically you can take the beam around in a circular path by uh, changing the beam control and this will result in a much wider area of rastering and scanning on the surface resulting in uh, machining. Okay. So, most holes drilled with E beam. Uh, are though characterized by small crater on the beam incident side of the work piece. So, that is how a E beam uh, system operates and generates the beam. Some characteristics typical of the E beam processes are uh, the drill uh, the holes that are mostly achieved by using E beam uh, machining processes have a short taper of 2 to 4 degrees and uh, particularly this is so when the sheet thickness is more than 0 0.1 millimeters and uh, the taper in this process comes by the fact that again the same principle that as the beam hits the surface and goes below or plows below the surface there is still a tendency because the, the surface is in ground potential of the electrons to get deflected and captured by the walls uh, and therefore, uh, as long as the drilling process is continuing and the material comes off in a um, 
from you know in this in this cavity which is being formulated the sides of the cavity are thereby also equally exposed uh, and that results in some kind of continuous removal on the sides uh, and they are more exposed in comparison to the bottom the very bottom and so therefore the slight taper so some ideas about the performance characteristics uh, uh, of these drilling holes can be obtained from this table here for example if the material that you are machining is a tungsten uh, work piece the sheet thickness may be about let us say about 250 microns a uh, hole diameter of 25 microns need to be created. So, typical uh, parameters of operation include drilling time of less than about 1 second accelerating voltage of 140 kilo volts and a beam current of 50 micro amperes. If it is a stainless steel uh, the material is stainless steel you have a 2.5 millimeter work piece thickness uh, with a hole diameter of 125 microns in the drilling time is about 10 times more about 10 seconds uh, and that is using an accelerating voltage of same order 140 and a beam current which is double about 100 micro amps. Similarly, for stainless steel uh, the thickness changes to 1 millimeter hole diameter 125 and the drilling time is still less uh, here uh, less than 1 second uh, using similar beam parameters 140 kilo volt accelerating voltages and 100 beam current. 100 micro amp being current. So, in a way this work piece thickness defines a lot of machining time uh, as can be seen here. Some other materials are for example, aluminum, alumina and quads and their respective times have been mentioned here in this particular table. So, that is how uh, you are placed um, as far as the E beam process parameters go. Uh, some other characteristics of E beams while well, uh, cutting a slot uh, the machining speed should intuitively depend on uh, uh, the rate of material removal that you need and uh, also uh, this corresponds to nothing but the cross section that you want to uh, actually machine okay, or cross section of the slot that you want to uh, cut or remove on the material. So, the sides of a slot in a sheet with thickness up to 0 0.1 millimeter are almost parallel um, a taper of about 1 to 2 degrees is observed in a slot cut in a thicker plate smaller amount of beam splatter occurs on the beam incident side in the work piece and some of these values are represented here in the table uh, you can see that corresponding to about 175 uh, microns thickness slot width of about 100 microns you can get a cutting speed of about 50 millimeters per minute with uh, an accelerating voltage of 130 kV and a uh, average beam current of 50 micro amperes. And this changes as you go between then stainless steel, tungsten, brass, alumina, brass being a softer material you can see uh, that the same kind of cutting speed can be obtained for uh, a slightly higher thickness of the work piece. Uh, with similar accelerating voltages and av average beam current which is intuitively quite uh, feasible. So, if we talk about the power requirement in a E beam the requirement is found uh, to be approximately proportional to the rate of material removal. So, if Q is the material removal then this power needed is proportional to Q and the constant of proportionality C uh, has been mentioned here in terms of um, power in watts per unit material removal rate in millimeter cube per minute C. So, for tungsten to iron to titanium to aluminum you can see these different values of C as reported in this table. Uh, Let us do a quick problem to have an idea of the numerical values uh, of the various uh, power requirements uh, which are increasingly felt in E beam. So, let us say we want to cut a 150 micron wide slot which is about on a 1 m thick tungsten sheet using an electron beam with 5 kilowatt power. Okay. So, determine the uh, cutting speed in this particular case let us see how the cutting speed can be found. So, let the speed of cutting be assumed to be V millimeters per minute then the rate of material removal requires
required is given by q equal to 150 by 1000 times of 1 V millimeter cube per minute. You know that uh, the slot is about 0.15 mm wide and about 1 mm thick. So, this volume is coming from that cross section times of the rastering speed of the beam per minute time gives you how many mm cube per minute you want to remove. And so, P in this case can be represented as C tungsten times of Q which is 12 times of 150 by 1000 volts and P is given to be 5000 watts and V comes out to be equal to 5000 by 12 into 0 0.15 millimeter per minute that is 2778 millimeter per minute or 4.6 centimeter per second which is quite an appreciable velocity. So, this is the velocity at which the beam should raster on the surface for creating a cut about 150 microns wide and 1 mm thick. So, this speed though is much less than actual speed. And one of the reasons why the actual speed is more is that there is a huge amount of thermal dissipation from the cutting zone to the areas adjoint to it. And so, that factor is not being accounted for in this particular simplistic mode of P equal to C Q material removal rate. So, let us now understand a little bit of the mechanics of how what are the events the sequence of events in which the material starts getting ablated from the surface as being hit upon by an E beam. So, uh, some of facts and figures that probably we all realize are that um, the electrons really are the sort of very stable small elementary particles with charges uh, in the range of 1.602 10 to the power of minus coulomb minus 19 coulomb uh, it contains a negative charge and uh, the amount of mass that it has is typically 9.109 10 to the power of minus 31 kg. Now, if such an electron is accelerated through a potential difference uh, let us say V volts okay, the change in kinetic energy uh, can be expressed as half into electron mass 9.1 10 to the power minus 31 times of u square minus u 0 square and this is in E V electron volts right where m e is the electron mass. <coughs> so, typically uh, we already have discussed this before that the amount of velocities that the electrons hit upon is a huge it is in the range of about uh, hundreds of thousands of kilometers per second with which the electrons start moving because of this accelerating potential and the thermionic effect. So, it has been increasingly found that as the electron goes very near uh, to the surface of a material uh, there is uh, you know no the material is not able to register an immediate effect on the electron striking, because by virtue of the electron size being very small, there is always the formation of something called a beam transparent layer on the top of the surface. So, the actual kinetic energy deliverance of the electron beam happens within some particular depth from the surface, and this area is actually called the affected zone in the E beam process, E beam machining process. And uh, this beam transparent layer is uh, uh, you can think of it as a layer which uh, you know the electron velocity through which goes undetected particularly because it is so fast and it is very rapidly moving and very small 
uh, the layer is not able to get excited the vibrations are not able to really get started the moment the, the electron passes through them. Okay. So <coughs> therefore when a fast moving electron impinges on a material it penetrates through a layer undisturbed before it starts colliding with the molecules ultimately brought to rest. So what essentially you are doing is that this half mv square energy is being transferred onto wherever the electron is finally hitting upon and wherever the electron is finally coming to a rest. So if we assume <coughs> the initial velocity of the emitting electron to be negligible the final expression of uh, the electron velocity in kilometers per second can be expressed by this term here where it is 600 times v to the power of half where uh, the v is basically the uh, potential difference across which the electron is being moved and this is a really a beam parameter. So if it is a 150 kVA uh, kilo, kilo, kilo volt through which it moves then this v corresponds to 150,000 uh, value. So it is a very high value and uh, that is how uh, the, the u is determined for the electrons in kilometers per second. So electron finally after the beam transparent layer is crossed over uh, collides with lattice atoms and imparts vibrations onto these atoms due to which there is an increase in the thermal energy because of random lattice vibrations occurring in a certain region. Um, so this however happens beneath the skin uh, or the upper portion of the also called the beam transparent layer. So there is always a skin which is developed uh, in the machining zone below which the whole thermal energy uh, is generated by conversion from kinetic to thermal. So the total range to which such an electron can penetrate if we call that delta. So it typically depends on what is the kinetic energy, uh, what is the accelerating voltage etcetera and empirically it has been really found that uh, the delta the beam penetration depth can be related to the voltage by the equation 2.6 10 to the power of minus 17 square of v by p rho where uh, this delta is the uh, penetration range in millimeters okay v is the volt so voltage so this is accelerating voltage and rho is the density of the material. So that is how uh, you can correlate, so it really varies as the square of the accelerating voltage V. So let us look at a problem example here, so during drilling of holes in a steel workpiece by EBM uh, we have hit upon an accelerating voltage of 100 k 50 kV, so we determine what is the range of depth just to give you an idea of the value uh, of this transparent layer. Uh, how small it is. So let us look at the density of steel here, density of steel is equal to 7 to 6 10 to the power of minus 7 kg per millimeter cube and uh, delta by that equation becomes 2.6 10 to the power of minus 17 times the square of V which is 150 times 10 to the power 3 150 volts uh, kilo volts uh, square of that okay, times divided by 7 to 6 10 to the power of minus 7. So this only comes and this is in mm millimeters, so this comes out to be about 77 microns. So that is how small this skin is, the skin which is uh, not affected as the electron beam goes. So transparent layer is about close to tens of microns which is formulated by an accelerating voltage of 150 kV. Of course if the accelerating voltage is changed then this delta value will increase further and uh, depending on um, what the accelerating voltages can be, it can go up to probably uh, 1000 kV or so, um, this can go up to about 100 microns, 100, 100 to 150 microns. So that is how much this uh, penetration depth can go up to. Uh, in, so in the interest of time we have to close uh, today's lecture, but then in the next lecture uh, I would like to talk about the thermal modeling part associated with the e-beam and try to develop 
uh, a analysis of how this local temperature rise would lead to melting of the materials and try to relate them to the material properties for getting a good understanding of the machining processes. Thank you.